filters. Filters can be classified as active filters and passive filters. As far as uh, your syllabus is concerned, only passive filters. So we have to see passive. Passive filters. So understand the filter. Filter is a two port network. Filter is a two port network. Suppose I'm having a two port network. It is a two port network. Input terminals will be there, output terminals will be there. I'm giving a sinusoidal signal. Here I'm giving that sinusoid signal that is here amplified. The output is uh, amplified. Then it is called the amplifier. It amplifies the input signal, sinusoidal signal. Its amplitude is increased. Its amplitude here, it may be one 10 millivolt. Here it may be 100 millivolt. 10 times amplified. 10 times amplified. Then it is called the amplifier. Another two port network I'm having. Same two port network. It means two input terminals and two output terminals. In that I'm giving an input signal. Here its amplitude is decreased. Amplitude of the input signal is decreased. Then it is called attenuator. Amplifier, here it is called attenuator. It attenuates its amplitude. So if the amplitude decreases, then the circuit is called attenuator. Some circuit, another two port network I'm having. Here, I'm giving two type of signal. One is high frequency, low frequency. Both are I'm having in the input. Both signals are added together and it is given. But in the output, in the output it is high frequency alone is available without any attenuation or amplification. The high frequency signal alone is available. It means it passes the high frequency signal. That's why this two port network may be called as High pass filter. High pass filter. Another, another two port network. In that same, in the same way, I am giving high frequency as well as low frequency. It gives out only low frequency without any amplification and attenuation, then it is called low pass filter. Low pass filter. Sometimes it gives a particular frequency alone. All other frequencies it rejects a particular band of frequency, then band pass filter. Another filter that uh, reject a band of frequencies in both low as well as high, it allows, then it is called band reject filter. Depends upon the frequency. What is frequency? What is frequency? <coughs> what is frequency? Number of oscillations per second. Number of times going up and down. That is called the frequency. Depends upon the frequency, the inductor and the capacitor behaves. Already we know. If you draw the 
and if you draw the frequency versus its impedance, is that L? Impedance of inductor, if you draw, it varies from zero to infinity. As frequency increases, its impedance increases. Suppose I am having a circuit in that inductor is there, then the impedance for high frequency is higher. The impedance for high, high frequency is higher. Automatically, the drop at high frequency will be more because impedance is higher. Suppose I am having an inductive circuit. This is pure uh, inductive circuit, a, a two-port network with inductive circuit. Here I am giving both signals, low frequency as well as high frequency. Low frequency means uh, low H ZL. ZL will be less. High frequency means high frequency means ZL will be more. Therefore, for high frequency, the amplitude is decreased. For low frequency, less drop in the amplitude. So I can say that uh, it uh, passes uh, low frequency and attenuates high frequency. I can say like that because uh, the impedance uh, of inductor is uh, high for high frequency. That's why the drop in the circuit is more, potential drop in the circuit is more. That's why it gives uh, less uh, amplitude in the output. That's why it attenuates uh, high frequency. So the inductor circuit acts as attenuator for high frequency. It bypasses low frequency. It bypasses low frequency. Similarly, if you put a capacitor, what is uh, what is uh, the nature of uh, nature of uh, impedance for uh, Z Z C? Z C will be looking like this. At low frequency, its impedance will be very high. At high frequency, at high frequency, its impedance is very low. That's why. If you put a capacitor in series, it, uh, it bypasses high frequency. It bypasses high frequency, but it blocks low frequency. That's why it, uh, a capacitor is a DC arrestor. If it is DC means zero frequency. Zero frequency, what is the uh, impedance? Its impedance is infinity. That's why it will not allow DC. It will not allow DC. As frequency increases, it allows. That's why... If a circuit is a pure capacitor, then if you it it allows high frequency and blocks low frequency, blocks low frequency. In other words, it attenuates. Depends upon the impedance, its amplitude decreases. That's why it attenuates low frequency and bypasses high frequency. That's why I can say this as a high pass filter. I can say it is a high pass filter. So if it is a combination of both, so we can select the frequency. We can select the frequency. So in in uh, um, electronics lab, you might have studied uh, the frequency response an, of an amplifier, modulus of uh, amplitude in dB scale, dB of amplitude. You took and you will draw a, a trapezoidal waveform. Have you noticed this? You, you, you are drawn the uh, trapezoidal waveform. In the trapezoidal waveform, you will be asked to find uh, F1 and F2. You will be asked to find F1 and F2. Cutoff frequencies. Cutoff frequencies. Um, the above lower cutoff frequency, it is flat uh, gain. Gain will be, gain will be unity. Gain will be unity. You will be, uh, or uh, it may be some, uh, 200 uh, uh, dB like that. I do not know what uh, scale you did the experiment. Let us assume that it is 200 or 20 dB or 200 dB. For that, it remains 200 between these two points. Between A and B, it is A and B, its uh, amplitude, the amplification is 200 decibel. But uh, below A, it decreases uh, at a particular rate at a particular rate, say it decreases at the rate of 20 dB per decade. You might, uh, these scales you will study in control system, but here it is not required. The slope can be represented in terms of, 
DP per decade. So one decade means the um, um, ten times frequency. Ten times frequency. Ten means uh, one means one decade. One to ten is called one decade. Ten to hundred is one decade. So if the frequency here is uh, ten hertz means at one hertz uh, it decreases at uh, uh, twenty dB. It's reduced by one by two times. Here, um, sorry, gain is reduced by 1 by root 2 times. 1 by root 2 times. Power is reduced from uh, uh, 1 by 2 times. That's why this frequency points may be called as half power points. Half power points. Half power points. Because uh, at A, its power is, uh, um, say, 10 watts means... Uh, at uh, F1, its power will be 10 watts. At B, its power is 10 watts means at F2, its power will be 5 watts. That's why it is called F1 and F2 are called the half power points. Half power points. The gain of the amplifier is, uh, it amplifies 10 watt times. Oh, suppose you are giving 1 watts power means, it gives output 10 watts means, amplifier gain is 10 watts. But at F1 and F2, it gives only 50% gain. That's why F1 and F2 are called half power points. But um, below F1, we, we used to say that uh, these signals are rejected by the filter. Suppose amplifier access filter means uh, it rejects the frequency less than F1. It rejects the frequencies above F2. It rejects the frequencies above F2. We can say like that. Because it is not amplifying those signals. That's why we can say that it rejects the fixed signals. It rejects the signal uh, below F1 and above F2. So, a yeah, signal means it may consist of many frequencies. Many frequencies. You might have studied uh, Fourier series. What is Fourier series? Huh? Uh -huh. That's what you want to say. Any signal can be written in terms of infinite number of sinusoidal signals. Infinite number of sinusoidal signals. Any signal. Suppose I'm having a signal like this. This can be this can be converted into sinusoidal signals, but some of sinusoidal signals. Some of sinusoidal signals. This is invented by a mathematician some 200 years back. No electrical signal. No electrical signal. That time he invented this without electric. Without, he do not know what is signal. But the mathematician found that he knows only waveform. Waveform. That waveform, this waveform can be converted into infinite number of sinusoidal signals with the different frequencies. With the different infinite number of frequencies, if you add all frequencies together, you will get this waveform. That is the meaning of Fourier series. Who found Fourier found? That's why it is called after his name. Found that any signal can be represented as infinite sum of sinusoidal signals. So, your signal, that is your Y signal, is sum of sinusoidal signal. Am I correct or not? So, if you pass through some filter, that's why some of the frequencies will be filtered out. Some of the frequencies will be filtered out. That's why there may be a, a truncation error in the output. Truncation error in the output. Because any signal is sum of Infinite number of sinusoidal signals. Suppose I am having a two-port network. It consists of uh, uh, a capacitor and a resistor. A two-port network. It is a two-port network. Am I correct or not? This is a two-port network. This box is a two-port network. It consists of a capacitor and resistor. That's all. That's all. It is uh, a high-pass filter, high-pass filter. 
it is a high pass filter if you give various signals or any signal if you give it filter out high frequencies and sorry it filter out low frequencies and allows only high frequency signals that's why it is called high pass filter and let us uh, let us find the mathematical model of this what is the mathematical model of this you forget about two port network let us write the mathematical model of this if you write the input side let us give v i of t as the input signal and uh, v of v i of t is given as the input signal current through is i of t let us assume so current is passing through this because output port is open that's why current is flowing through this let it be c let it be r what is the mathematical model of this uh, um, if you write k v l kirchhoff's voltage law v i of t equal to uh, 1 by c integral of i of t dt that is the potential drop across capacitor plus uh, what is the drop across r r i of t that's all if you take laplace transform assuming zero initial conditions zero initial conditions initial conditions if you assume zero initial conditions if you assume v i of s equal to 1 by c s i of s because it is zero initial condition that's why no need to consider that uh, initial conditions plus r i of s r i of s therefore if you take i of s outside you will get 1 by c s plus r multiplied by i of s then you can assume that current is the output if you assume current is the output voltage is input if you assume like that then you can write a ratio like this i of s divided by v i of s equal to what output by input is called transfer function what is called new definition output by input is called what transfer function what is transferred from input to output the output is current input is input voltage then the transfer function is called i of s divided by v of s equal to 1 by 1 by c s plus r am i correct or not or you can say that you can say that c s divided by r c s plus 1 i simplified this can be written as uh, c s 1 plus r c s so c s goes to numerator that's why c s divided by r c s plus 1 r c s plus 1 what is the voltage across r what is the voltage across r v not of s that v not output voltage v v not of t output o represent output v not of t is output voltage we know that what is the current through this i of t v not of t equal to what v not of t equal to r i of t am i correct or not so i can find another transfer function if i know one equation i can find transfer function input is i of t output is v not of t so output by input is the transfer function first let us take laplace transform assuming zero initial condition v not of s equal to r i of s output by input output is v not of s input is i of s that's why r you are getting a transfer function called r already you got one transfer function that is i of s divided by v i of s that is equal to c s divided by r c s plus 1 r c s plus 1 that is one another transfer function you got if you multiply these two together here i go, you got one transfer function here you got another transfer function if you multiply these two you will get another transfer function v not of s divided by i of s left side i am multiplying i of s divided by v i of s equal to right hand side if you multiplied r c s divided by r c s plus 1 
this is the IFS getting cancelled. That's why output voltage of this two port network divided by input voltage equal to RCS divided by RCS plus one. This is the transfer function of this two port network. Laplace transform of output, the definition for transfer function is Laplace transform of output divided by Laplace transform of input. That is equal to RCS divided by RCS plus one. Therefore, this two port network can be represented by RCS upon RCS plus one. RCS upon RCS plus one. This is called this also may be called as H of S. H of S. H of S equal to H of S equal to RCS divided by RCS plus one. The RCS divided by RCS plus 1 is called transfer function or HFS is called a transfer function of the given circuit. Transfer function means output by input. Laplace and sum of output divided by Laplace and sum of input. V naught of S divided by V naught of S divided by V I of S. That is equal to RCS divided by RCS plus 1. That gives high frequency. That's why it is called high pass filter because it passes high frequency. Let us check. But if you replace H of S equal to what? H of S equal to RCS divided by RCS plus one. If you replace, what is sinusoidal transfer function? H of J omega, am I correct? Or? S equal to, you have to substitute S equal to J omega if you substitute, then it is called sinusoidal transfer function. This is called a Laplace transfer function. This is called Laplace transfer function. Laplace transfer function will be in terms of S. But S equal to sigma plus J omega. If you assume sigma equal to zero, then it is called sinusoidal transfer function. Sinusoidal, if your input is only sinusoidal signal, if your input is only no DC signal, then sigma equal to zero. Your input signal is only sinusoidal. No input signal, no DC signal, then it is called H of J omega. H of J omega equal to replace S by J omega. R C J omega divided by R C J omega. R C J omega plus one. Or you can call that J R C omega divided by R J R C omega plus one. What is the magnitude of H of J omega? equal to R C omega divided by square root of R square C square omega square plus one. When omega tends to zero, when omega tends to zero, what happens? This tends to zero. It means output by input equal to zero. So output voltage equal to zero times input voltage. Therefore, when omega is zero, that is at lowest frequency, output is zero. What happens when omega tends to zero, tends to infinity? What you will get? V naught of omega divided by V i of omega equal to R C infinity divided by infinity. Infinity by infinity you will get undefined function. Undefined function. Undefined function. So square on both sides, you will get R square c square omega square divided by here also you remove the squares what you will get r square c square omega square plus one deliberately i am squaring numerator and denominator no change in magnitude no change in magnitude so if uh, if you if if you substitute omega tends to infinity what you will get infinity by infinity. So differentiate the numerator denominator by with respect to omega, what you will get two omega r square c square divided by two omega r square c square. Am I correct or not? Getting cancelled equal to one. Therefore, output voltage equal to V naught of omega equal to V i of omega you are getting. If the frequency is very high, infinity, 
whatever you are giving that is available in the output that is available in the output that's why it is called high pass high pass filter that's why it is called high pass filter so what you are getting is as omega tends to infinity you are getting it is equal to 1 therefore v naught of omega equal to v i of omega as frequency increases as frequency increases in output voltage equal to input voltage that's why it is called high pass filter high pass filter we can design a low pass filter also we can design a low pass filter also if you if you change this way if you change this way It is also a two port network. Two port network. This is low pass filter. This is low pass filter. R, C, input voltage is V I of T. Current through this is I of T. Current through this also I of T. Voltage is V of T, V naught of T. Current through this is I of T. Let us write KVL for this. V I of T equal to R I of T plus 1 by C integral of I of T dt. Z assuming zero initial conditions. Assuming zero initial conditions. If you take, <coughs> we take Laplace tensor, assuming zero initial conditions, what you will get is V I of S equal to R I of S plus 1 by C S, 1 by C S I of S. Take I of S outside, what you will get R plus 1 by C S multiplied by I of S. Therefore, what you will get, what is the transfer function? Let us assume current is the output. Current is the output. Assume. Then output by input equal to what? Output by input equal to I of S divided by V I of S equal to 1 by R plus 1 by C S. What is output voltage? V naught of T equal to voltage across capacitor. Am I correct or not? Voltage across capacitor. Then we can call it as 1 by C integral of I of T dt. Because V naught equal to V naught equal to 1 by C integral of I of T dt. Because voltage across the capacitor is output voltage. That's why we can write like that. If you take Laplace and some assuming zero initial conditions, V naught of S equal to 1 by C S I of S, assuming zero initial conditions. Let us assume uh, I of S is the input and V naught as the output. In that case, V naught of S divided by I of S equal to 1 by C S. Let it be 2. Let it be 1. If you multiply these two, the for you will get the transfer function for the whole network you will get transfer function for this whole network because input is V I of T, output is V naught of T. Therefore, I will get V naught of T, V naught of S divided by V I of S equal to V naught of S divided by I of S multiplied by I of S divided by V I of S. That is equal to what? What is V naught of S by I of S? 1 by C S. 1 by C S multiplied by this 1 by R plus 1 by C S. If you take 1 by C S outside, what you will get is 1 by C S whole divided by 1 by C S you are taking outside R C S plus 1, R C S plus 1, 1 by C S getting cancelled. Therefore, 1 divided by R C S plus 1, 1 divided by R C S plus 1. That is the transfer function for the given set code. Output divided by input. If you write the frequency transfer function, if you write the frequency transfer function, V naught of omega divided by V i of omega equal to 1 by R j R c omega plus 1. What is model R? This can be called as h of omega h of j omega. What is modulus of h of j omega? 1 by square root of 
R square C square omega square plus one. Am I correct or not? Real part square plus imaginary part square. That is the magnitude. Square root of real part square plus imaginary part square. That's what I put a square root. I am I think you might have studied this. How to find magnitude? Magnitude of a complex number is alpha plus j beta. What is the magnitude of this? Square root of alpha square plus beta square. That's why I wrote like this. Modulus. So here r square c square omega square plus 1. Omega tends to 0. What will happen? Omega tends to 0. You will get 1 by 1. That is equal to 1. So it passes low, pass, low frequencies. When omega tends to infinity, what happens? 1 by infinity. 1 by infinity. That is equal to 0. That's why it will not pass high frequency. That's why it is called low pass frequency, low pass filter. It acts as a low pass filter. So we are checking for extreme conditions. Lowest frequency zero and the highest frequency only we are checking. In between what will happen? Suppose I have drawn a, a frequency response as you did in the lab. If you vary the frequency and uh, measuring the modulus of H of omega, that is transfer function, output by input. You are giving input one volt. How you did the experiment, uh, frequency response experiment in the lab? You are varying frequency only. You are not varying the magnitude. Have you noticed that? How many of you noticed this? You did the experiment? Yes. Uh, you are looking like uh, you didn't do the experiment. You are keeping the magnitude constant. You are increasing the frequency gradually. And you are measuring the output voltage. That's all. That is the experiment. In the same way, if you vary the frequency from 0 to infinity, if you draw the frequency, it will go like this. Then it go, it drops like this. This is the characteristic of H of H of omega. This is called H of omega. Modulus of H of omega. I plotted for H of omega. It means I plotted between the ratio between output and input. Output. You, you did the same thing. You did the it's, you draw you have drawn h of omega in the lab but what you drawn in the lab is 20 log h of omega you have drawn am i correct or not you find the magnitude then you take 20 log then you draw that is called in decibel to make it decibel you made 20 log something so you will get the response like this it is a low pass filter low pass filter because it it gives uh, amplify amplification. Here it is uh, passive. Doesn't give any amplification. If you give 1 volt, what you get for uh, infinity? What you get for low pass filter? Sorry, high pass filter. When omega equal to infinity, you got 1. In input voltage also 1. Output also 1. No amplification. But at uh, low frequency, high pass filter means it gives 0. Low pass, uh, low pass filter means for low frequency, it gives one. We checked this here. We checked somewhere here. Yes. For omega equal to zero, it gives one. For omega equal to infinity, it gives zero. It means no amplification. Whatever input signal is available. One. Because it is a passive filter. Passive filter. I will Now I will explain what is passive filter. Your amplifier is here. Active filter. Your amplifier is a band pass active filter. Band pass active filter because it passes a band of frequencies. This band is passed by the, your amplifier. That's why it is a band pass active filter. Why it is called active filter means it passes a band of frequency as well as it amplifies the signal. That's why it is called active. All Trans amplifiers are called active circuit. Uh, that's why it is called active filter. If any amplifier is involved in that circuit, then it is called active filter. In a filter circuit consists of any amplifier, then it is called active filter. That's all. But you are going to study only passive filter. Uh, this is a low pass filter. That's why <laughs> at low frequency, it gives one, no amplification. But at high frequency, it becomes zero. How the response for high pass filter? High pass filter will be looking like this. 
high pass frequency will be looking like this this is frequency versus frequency versus h of omega uh, here i put f i should put omega here or here i should put f i cannot mix both h of f here f or h of omega here omega you have to put hmm? what is uh, 2 pi f equal to omega so you can write in both ways h of f or h of omega if you put omega then here the axis also must be omega <coughs> now let us uh, design what is cutoff frequency for this so we have to find uh, this cutoff frequency will be given this uh, first time this cutoff frequency will be given fc will be given you have to design a circuit have, then designing a low pass filter means what uh, what is low pass filter what is a low pass filter this is the low pass filter low pass rc filter this is the low pass filter Suppose I gave Fc, the cutoff frequency I gave means what you have to do is you have to find the value of R and C, that's all. If you find the value of R and C, then you designed a low pass filter, that's all. So finding the value of R and C is called designing a filter, low pass filter. So now let us, uh, 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 let us find how to design a low pass filter that we will see now. Uh, we know that H of omega equal to what? H of omega equal to J R C omega plus 1. So, we have to equate this to 1 by 2. What is magnitude of H of omega? 1 by square root of R square C square omega square plus 1. Let us equate to 1 by 2. We have to find omega for 1 by 2. Magnitude equal to 1 by root 2. Sorry. Power only 1 by 2. Magnitude is 1 by root 2. What I said here? Magnitude is 1 by root 2. Sorry. Magnitude is 1 by root 2. Magnitude is 1 by root 2 times. Power is 1 by 2. So, magnitude is 1 by root 2 times. That's why we have to equate these two and we have to find omega. That omega will be given. Accordingly, you have to find R and C. So, you will get one equation. If you equate these two, what you will get? Root 2 equal to root 2 equal to square root of R square C square omega square plus 1 or 2 equal to R square C square omega square plus 1 or R square C square omega square equal to 1 or omega square equal to 1 by R square C square or omega equal to 1 by R C. So, that I equated to 1 by root 2. That's why at that frequency, it is cutoff frequency omega c. Cutoff frequency omega c. That's why omega is replaced by omega c. So, at that frequency, what should be the value of R and C? You can find by using that uh, equation. Two unknowns. What are the two unknowns? R and C. But you have only one equation. That's why one should be assumed. Either C or R has to be assumed. Let us assume R because it is harmless. It is not function of frequency. That's why let us assume R, R equal to 100 ohm. You can find C. 